Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Winteregg, CEO of the Private Dentist Alliance. I want to talk to all of you students out there today who are wondering what your future is going to be like as a career in dentistry, as an assistant, as a hygienist, as a dentist, where is this profession going with the rapid increase of the DSO movement? I'm here to tell you the PDA is going to help you and I want you to become a member today it is free. Now, why should you become a member? You're going to get weekly video updates from me and you're going to get regular updates of our newsletters from the Alliance on exactly what is happening and how we are going to help preserve and protect the private practice of dentistry. Now, to me, the most important advantage is you are going to get access to our job board. What is that? Our private practicing members all have access to our PDA job board which means if they have an opening in their private practice of assistant, hygienist, doctor, front office staff, they're going to be able to post it. And you're gonna be able to check up regularly. And as our membership grows, we're gonna be covering larger and larger territories across the United States. If you are looking for a job in any position in the office of a private practice, you need to become a student member today. It is free. Go to www.privatedental dot org and become a student member today you're going to love your benefits do it now what is up guys it's your boy matt havis back at it again with the dental student vibes podcast and i'm sitting down today talking to tyler tobear of the shared practices podcast now we discuss everything from our own goals how to accomplish those goals to buying our practice straight out of dental school. Not going to a DSO, not going to an associateship, but sitting down and buying the practice of your dreams and how to accomplish it on a step-by-step -step process. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Tune in and let's learn a lot. And remember, buy bond. Thanks. All right, we have the man with us today, Mr. Tyler Tolbert. So Matt, you, you uh, and I, I, I told you a while I've been talking to Tyler. He reached out to me. Yes. Tyler is with Shared Practices. Um, and he, Tyler, how, when did we first get in contact? I mean, we've been talking for a, a few months now. Um, I was a lurker on your Instagram page for a long time. And then I found an excuse to actually reach out to you. Um, I, think, I think what happened is you, oh, I know what it was. I posted my mailer on the Shared Practices group page. You said it was awesome. I recognize your name because I, you know, I have it's on right. my recents on Instagram because I'm always mm -hmm. looking at you all the time, and uh, and so that's that's how we got in touch. I said, hey, that that'd be cool. We'll talk yeah. about it. We'll get it on the show. So here we are. Here we are. So yeah. So like Tyler is one of the most motivated dental students. Like he's ten steps ahead of us right now. Like, I love it. He is on his game, man. I love to hear. It. I'm telling yeah. you. So well, we have a lot to learn. There, yeah, I guess. yeah. So um, like Tyler said, I mean, I guess we could you know, just kind of started with that. Mm -hmm. Tyler made these mailers. Um, Tyler, can you, can you tell us more about the mailers? Yeah. So the idea with the mailers, uh, basically the predicament of being a dental student is that generally in our space, uh, dental students don't really have a whole lot of avenues as far as trying to go out and find a practice to own. Right. So if you get to talking to brokers in your area, uh, transition consultants, creditors, whatever, a lot of times what you're going to hear back, sometimes they're a little bit more open minded than others. But a lot of times what you hear back is, you know, let's wait a little bit, you know, stay in school, do your thing, learn how to be a dentist. You know, we'll talk in a year, we'll talk in two years, whatever. Um, and that happens a lot. And people are just not necessarily wanting to play ball with you because financing uh, students going up to new grads you know, it's, it's obviously inherently a little bit riskier than, you know, talking to a dentist that's looking at practices that are being posted on market. Right. right. Um, so the idea of a mailer mailer is to reach out to people that have yet to put their practice up for sale, 
but maybe there is an inkling in their mind uh, of what they're going to be doing after all this or what they're going to be doing with a given practice. Perhaps they'll be selling it soon. And so you're catching those people with a mailer that tells your story, tells what you're looking for, what you're hoping to do, what your timeline is. And you pretty much kind of just sit and wait and hear back about what, you know, what they have for you. Um, and so that's kind of what I've been engaging in. Um, so basically, you know, what you do is, is, is you design, you know, whatever size, a five by nine, what have you, you write your story, you make it look all nice and pretty, and you send it off to a directory of dentists that you found online, um, either through, you know, your, your state dental board or what have you, maybe Google reviews or something like that. And uh, you just wait and see what comes back and you get to talking to people. And it's really amazing uh, when you find the sort of dentist that will take that sort of fledgling dental student and want to take them under their wing and, and perhaps, you know, sell their practice to them or take them on for a short time as an associate and then followed by a buyout opportunities. It's pretty amazing. Like the sort of opportunities that are kind of just lying in wait that dental students really aren't uh, looking for. Right. And I mean, you brought up a great point. They're off market, right? And that's what George right. says, but you find the gems and went in the off market. Uh, practices. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's because once those practices do go on market, they're gone. And if you, you might come across them online, but they, they're there for such a short time. Um, there's almost always somebody that can just sort of swoop in. They already got their, their, their pre-approved for a loan and they've got had a few years out and they just sort of, um, they look like a better opportunity to that selling dentist. And also uh, you kind of have to take into account the mindset of that seller. I mean, if they've already put their practice up for sale, nine times out of 10, their ideal transition is you buy it, I'm out. Right. So like, I'm, I'm just going to walk out, I'm done. Um, and that, and I don't want anything more to do with it. You know, it's nothing personal. Uh, whereas when you find something off market, it's generally someone who is willing to invest some time in you that wants to get to know you. Um, that is very concerned with the welfare of their patients. When, you know, when they get bought out, they want to know that someone's coming in there, <clears throat> excuse me, someone's coming in there. That's going to take really good care of them. Um, and has the sort of knowledge and experience to do so and has the right personality. And so that's, that's kind of what you're capturing with an off market strategy. Right. So I wonder, you know, once we, I, I'm already skipping ahead like 10 years, but you know, buying the second practice, is, okay. I wonder if that's still a good, like methodology to go with, to, to be looking around, you know? Yeah. I mean, you want to entertain all the avenues that are available to you. I mean, you know, the cost of doing a mailer is, you know, fractional compared to, you know, the revenue that you can get from the right practice that you're looking for, um, which I, I would challenge you to think that you can't buy a practice until about 10 years from now, your second practice. I think right. you could do it really as soon as however you plan for. I mean, if right. you want to be buying your second or third practice six months out, that's entirely feasible. I've had some people um, on my segment that, that did the very same thing. Um, and, and I believe you're not giving yourself enough credit with that, Seth, that that's what you no, want to do. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm just oh, like, I know, I'm that. Get to I know that mailers already, you know, I got to make the mailer first. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get you, uh, we'll get you working yeah. on that for sure. I'm going to spill some Seth secrets out. right now. As soon as he saw like your mailer and he, he, Seth was like, he, he texted me. He was like, first he texted me. I didn't answer in time. So he called me like, dude, we need to get these mailers now. <laughs> now. Yeah. And I was right. like, I, I'm over here because yeah. I don't even know what I was doing. I had no clue. I was like a brick wall. Like, mailers, yeah. I don't even know. Drop what whatever you're doing right now. I'm like, yeah, yeah, mailers. Look, come on. I just wrote it down somewhere. <laughs> That's but, good. Okay, we'll, we'll get some yeah. mailers. That's good. That, that makes me happy to think that I inspire people yeah. to drop whatever they were doing and get the mailers done. No, well, I mean, I, I commend you on having that kind of initiative. You know, some people would just kind of look at the post and say, hey, that's nice. Maybe I'll do that at some point. But um, you guys are the types of guys to see an idea like that and immediately set about implementing and seeing how you can do it, you know, 100%. Um, and I think that's a, a common thread that, that we all share. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, so are you. Talking, I mean, okay. think about it like um, you're, you're talking about initiative. When I'm in the gym and I'm listening to whatever, some podcast or whatever, I'll like stop and I'll pull up my Google drive and I'll start taking notes in the middle of a set. Like, dude. I mean, that, that's what you have to do. And I'm sure you You're special breed. do the same thing. Do you not do the yeah. same? Yeah, no, I do. I do. <laughs> I mean, I, I have different, you know, workout tracks and stuff that I like to yeah. listen to. Um, but yeah, I absolutely pump iron to podcasts sometimes. I mean, there's no shame in it. And, no. uh, and, and you're like, I'm, I'm a very meticulous note taker. Um, I've actually, my, our editor has kind of gotten onto me a few times. Um, the guy that does our audio because they can kind of hear my keyboard clicking like while I interview people because I'm just really like uh, obsessed over 
making information tangible and not like trying to keep it in my head. And like when you're trying to process so many different things, if you're an avid podcast listener, if you're reading books all the time, um, you know, it's really essential that you actually write these things down and keep a record of them and, and try to implement them at some time. And so when you kind of get in that mindset, like you're, no matter what you're doing, you got to drop it. You got to make a note. You got to think of it later. Um, so we're, we're pretty similar in that too. I think yeah. I'm just not quite as ripped as you are. That's all. <laughs> hey, I'm, not, I'm not anything. I'm not anything. You it's, funny. Head just, you, <laughs> it's funny you say that though. Cause like you, you can hear Howard Ferran, like when Howard Ferran's doing a, a thing, he'll, you can hear him like mm-hmm. clicking, clicking. I'm like, yeah. what, what was that name again? What was that name? <laughs> yeah, no, no. He's like, I, I got to schedule that for the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're, there are similar people in that regard. He's getting ready for this exam he's about to take after the uh, podcast. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he's got to study up. He's taking boards. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. So, Matt, you got any any questions? Because Tyler and I, I have, have talked about uh, the mailer and stuff a lot. Um, I do. What, what questions do you so, have about that? So when you're sending these mailers out, do you mm-hmm. direct them towards certain locations of where you potentially want to practice? Or do you just kind of send it to your general vicinity of, like, just ideas? Right. So before you kind of set about you know, even designing your mailer, thinking about messaging, you know, where it's going to go. You have to know a few things about yourself first. I mean, it always starts with you. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to be in five to 10 years? You know, where do you want to live? What's your ideal location? Like it it always starts with vision and, and making that very clear from the beginning. I mean, how, how can you send out mailers to the right people uh, if you don't even know exactly where you're going to end up being? Um, so that's essential to get nailed down first. If you don't have that, maybe you're not exactly ready to send the thing out. You should maybe go ahead and start making a mailer, but you know, you can sort of generate that list. Once you can get that, that's kind of where you start. So, um, basically just, just to give an example, my fiance, uh, is in school to be an anesthesiologist assistant slash sugar mama. If some of this stuff doesn't work out so well. (laughs) And, uh, she had already signed with a hospital network. Um, it's a little bit South of Atlanta. Um, I'm currently in Augusta, Georgia, by the way, I'm not sure if we mentioned that, but, um, so I knew that she was going to be there at least for the next few years. We went and checked it out. Absolutely loved the place. It was just idyllic, you know, just around there. We could really see ourselves there. So I said, okay, you know, that's probably where we're going to end up. It's on the same side of Atlanta. It's both of our families, you know, it's just picturesque. It's perfect. Um, so what I did from there, I identified where she's going to be working. I knew how long she would want to commute, how long I would commute. And from that sort of information, I was able to sort of just generate a radius, right? Um, and once I had that, I was able to take a directory from my state dental board, um, you know, cross-reference that with the radius that I had made using, you know, county, zip codes, whatever, and get a mailing list together. And so that's just, you know, all the people that may be getting up to retirement age within this area um, based off of licensure dates, whatever was in the mailer, uh, excuse me, the directory. Um, and then from there, you sort of just go on Google, you look up these practices, you see what boxes are being checked for me personally. Um, I'm looking to have a group practice one day. So that with that model comes certain things that kind of have to be in place. You need a certain amount of ops. If I'm looking at an office um, that, you know, only has like three or four ops and there's not really going to be an option to build things out. Maybe I don't want to send that mailer along or maybe I do just because I want them to know I'm looking and maybe they know somebody. Right. So that's, that's kind of up to your discretion. Um, But of course it always starts with where you're going to be. And then it becomes what kind of practice am I looking for? And that's how you sort of narrow down that list. Because depending on where you're looking, you might get a list that has like thousands of people on it. Um, you don't necessarily need to send thousands of mailers. Personally, I send about 400 or so. So, Very nice. right, And you got to see his mailer because like the first time I heard about this um, was Charles Loretto. He, and he's uh-huh. just like, oh yeah, maybe, put like yeah. a resume, couple things, and like maybe your headshot, I think. But then you see uh, Tyler's mailer. Tyler, do you have one on you? Come on. Uh, or you use yeah. them all up? It's in my room. If you want me to grab it. Um, Honestly, yeah. this give me, thing give me like beautiful. Give me 15 seconds tops. No go problem. ahead. Go no ahead. Take time. So this, this thing is, um, it's basically like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. He said he went to like a FedEx and he got a photo of him and his fiance and he put a, uh, it's, it's basically the like watermarks into the uh, document and, oh and it's written goodness. over it. And it's like, you see go. this thing and it's it's amazing. Did you time me? <laughs> yeah, I Done. ran for it. So this is it. Um, so it's kind of Look this. At that. Oh this. my god! That thing is professionally done. And now on the back is sort of a letter. Look at that and everything. Like th- this. So you got this like printed from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Versus like I feel like a lot of people would just you know print it off of Word Word uh, Microsoft Word or something like that. Yeah. You know? And that's fine. I mean, you can definitely do that. Um, for me, it was sort of my COVID project, so I had a little bit more time than usual. 
Yeah. Um, you know, for me, I think if, if you want something done well, you, you have to know how to delegate it to people that do certain things professionally. So I'm not going to take any responsibility for the actual graphic design of this thing. I'm not talented with that. I tried to do it myself and it was atrocious. Um, I actually just went on Fiverr. Um, that's uh, F I V E R R I think. So that's just a, a website with a whole bunch of people that can do little odd jobs for you for relatively cheap prices. And there was a graphic designer on there. So um, you know, I sent them the bio, the picture that I wanted to use, the sort of transition I was looking for, and uh, also a, my little addition to it is a QR code, uh, which linked to my Wix site, which has my whole like online resume, which is another COVID thing that would have never happened if I was like in regular school session. But yeah, um, yeah that's basically the whole package together. So um, since then, uh, let's see, generally you wait about like two to three weeks to see what you hear back. Um, it's been a little bit over a month. And so I'm just kind of going through, um, you know, the responses I've been getting. Sometimes I get emails, sometimes um, they send it back to me in the mail. Sometimes I get a phone call and uh, like visiting practices, talking to sellers, you know, trying to materialize this dream I've been working on for a long time. So it's really amazing. I mean, the, the mailer is just sort of a means to an end, but um, at the same time when you're making it, it's kind of like a culmination of all the things you've done up to this point. And you're like trying to sell yourself and say, you know, Hey, I want your practice or Hey, I want a job, you know, whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, so it, it's definitely a turning point and, and I'm excited for you guys to do it because it's an awesome process to go through. I, I love watching you like just do this and everything. I'm learning so much from you right here. This is so cool. See? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm passionate about, I mean, I, the only reason I'm doing it is because I've, I've seen other people do it and I'm working off of them. I mean, there's no need to like reinvent the wheel and I'm not trying to say this is like a proprietary thing that I've done. I, I know at least four or five other people that I bothered a lot in, in developing this thing. So um, by no means am I taking any credit for it. I'm sure once you guys have done it, you'll turn around, you'll help someone else with the same strategy. So, well, I'll uh, tell you one thing. It seems like you've had the best results, right? The best responses. That, that's what it seems like, for real. Yeah. And then also your whole pa packet and everything, the whole mailer is like the best looking one. So there's, yeah. well, you know, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. You know, I mean, I you send out four hundred mailers or however many, and you only really need one good response. You know, that that, right. that goes the distance. So, um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I've I've seen some interesting things, and I'm kind of going through financials and stuff. And you know, we'll we'll see what happens. And you know, I'll keep everybody updated <laughs> as yeah. a, as time goes on. I mean, I still got yeah. another year left in school. There's a lot of uh, obstacles to make it through, and I'm not entirely sure what they are yet uh, because of this whole COVID situation. But you know. Uh, I'm not as worried about it because I'm, I'm worrying about what's going to be happening after school anyway. So, you know, I, I assume everything in between will kind of take care of itself. Right. So um, when are you planning on buying? Right. So the idea the ideal transition for me would be um, a six month associateship, but written into that contract is I'm going to be buying out after six months. And um, there's a lot of different ways to skin that cat. There's a lot of different ways and different times that you can end up purchasing that practice. I mean, it's not unheard of at all to purchase a practice right out of school to, you know, get out of graduation, go in there and be the solo doc, you know, be the owner. Um, that's, that's definitely a strategy and it works. It, it worked really well for George, one of my um, uh, co-hosts and, and friends of the Share Practices podcast. Um, but, the, you know, that's just sort of the sort of transition that I'm looking for. I'm looking to get into um, a larger practice right off the bat. Um, I wouldn't mind sort of building up to it, but ideally it'd be one that has a certain amount of ops and the sort of production and, and procedure mix that I'm looking for. Um, in order to finance some of those larger practices, a lot of times you have to have a little bit of a track record to show creditors so that they're willing to, you know, kind of help you along a little bit. And there's other things like seller financing that can help make those, those things possible as well. But um, another aspect of it is just, you know, helping me get up to speed in working in a private practice environment. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not kidding anyone here. Like I, I am not going to be a hundred percent ready to go on day one to be, you know, a, a highly producing dentist. Like I'm going to be coming out of dental school. There's going to be a learning curve. And for me, I mean, there is a certain amount of comfort that's offered by doing a short-term associateship. And, you know, as long as that is leading into, you know, my ideal practice opportunity, as long as that's getting me into my dream, what difference does that six months really make for me? Right. So, right. yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much the plan. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that, um, like you've got everything planned out so well, Matt, like, do you, do you have a plan that you're trying to come up with? Um, right. Tell, now. tell Tyler your plan. Okay. So you had a little bit of a plan. This, this is, I, I'm, I'm really glad you're asking this line of question here, Seth. And I don't mean to interject, but like everyone's got intent, right? Like I know all you guys know about the things that you want to do in your career. Everyone has this thing in their mind. They're like, Oh, I'm going to do this someday. Right. But 
when you ask somebody, what is your plan? Like, what is your goal? What are you looking to implement and when? That's when people actually start to feel a little bit challenged. And you actually ask yourself, you know, am I filling in some gaps here with intent instead of actual like materialized goals? So I'm, I'm very interested to hear about it, Matt. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I love the business aspect of dentistry sure. and everything. I want to be able to, you know, do it well and do it by myself and, and all that stuff. Eventually, you know, you, okay. I would like to learn along the way. But my main goal is I want to be able to do full comprehensive care. And okay. I want to be like very just proficient clinically. I want to be able to do like anything that needs to be done besides ortho. I like ortho, but okay. not, I'm not that into it. So I want to be able to do all the procedures. If the patient walks in and needs like full mouth rehab, I want to be able to do every single thing and do it confidently. Like no matter mm -hmm. what comes through my door, that's what's being treated. So I would like okay. to be able to do that and then eventually get to the point where I would like a more of like a smaller boutique type office where I can okay. cool. do very, I could do very high quality work and obviously charge. I would like to be fee for service and then charge enough to where like, it, you know, I have to live too and I would like to live a decent life. We all but it's, like, it's not all about the money and to get to the point where I'm financially secure and make good investments outside of dentistry. That way he, I can He wants practice. to buy a Chevelle. I did. So, <laughs> That's so good my one, my one quality in life <laughs> since I saw Fast and Furious, um, the fourth one where Letty technically dies. Uh -huh. um, so Vin Diesel drives the Chevelle and right, of course, he, like pimps it out. Oh. And he took it from like beige in the first movie, the Hot Rod Red, and then he took oh, yeah. Matt Gray. And I love gray cars. And he put that, and then in the first race, he puts it into a like driving hits the first gear, and then immediately. He goes and on on the back two wheels, and, and that's gonna be mad. And yours is gonna be the sunset. He's like driving a T Rex. It's insane. Yeah. So as soon as I saw it, <laughs> that's it. I, I need a Chevelle. Yeah. So, okay. anyways, but that's like my okay. one frivolity. But I, I mean, I'm pretty simple like that. I don't I don't like spending a lot of money on myself. But that's the one thing. But I want to be able to do that and eventually get to the point where it could be this like old gray dentist that could just provide free work. That's like my okay. end goal to be able yeah. to put smiles on people's faces for free and don't have to worry about costs. I'm just yeah, and just do what you need. They need an implant, cool. you could do it. You know what I'm saying? Like. That's like that's the end fantastic. goal to be able to, I mean, I'll be taken care of well as a dentist. I want to make the right decisions, but I want to be able to provide, you know, after all the years of making good money to provide back to people that can't afford the work that they need. So that's like a, yeah. a big, big goal. Like the very end goal is to do yeah. that. And I always tell Seth, like financially, I had this one class when I was uh, in undergrad and it was one finance class and I'm somewhat, you know, financially, you know, illiterate right now. And he, this guy right here, he was a CFO of a huge oil company, really smart. And he took a liking to me. And he was like, hey, you know, cool. you're, you're, you want to be a dentist and you're in a finance course with a whole bunch of business people. I could see like you're pretty serious about it. He took a liking to me or whatever. And he said that his goal since the time he was 21 years old was he wanted to financially secure himself and his wife, his children and his grandchildren before they can retire. Okay. So that's what, and he, he ended up doing it. And I was like, no, that's wow. a goal. You know, that's, yeah. that is, yeah. you know, shooting, you know, for in the big leagues, like he, he, and he ended up doing it and granted, you know, he's, you know, corporate and everything. He made very good money, but I, I challenge myself to do that. And it's not all about the money, but if you could like Forrest Gump says, that's good. One less thing to worry about, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's no, kind of like, kind of like a, like a blueprint of like what I want to do and everything. And as I go on and mature and stuff, I'm 25 yeah, years man. old and I'm, I'm looking to like, I guess, learn clinically and everything and see the, the, you know, the down and dirty parts of dentistry. Cause you know, there's one thing in the sim lab when you're, you know, cutting a plastic tooth and That's you just sure. all the theory of it. And then now to put it in practice, now that we're starting in the clinic, it's, you know, apples and oranges, you know, you're trying to figure out the systems and everything. And as I figure this out, you know, I'll be able to add more details and, you know, kind of refine and make it more concrete. So yeah, no, no cool. question, man. I, um, well, I, I commend you for, having such, you know, clarity of vision. I mean, you literally know uh, what you're going to look like in like 30 or 40 years. And you're going to be that, you know, silver haired dentist that's just, you know, <laughs> making miracles and changing lives, man. That's an amazing thing. I, I um, mean, and, yeah. And I think it's interesting too, because, you know, a lot of people that are uh, sort of business oriented and have this idea of what they, what ownership looks like to them. Um, they generally don't envision themselves working until they're, you know, super old and like giving away dentistry, right? Not because it's a bad idea, but because that's just not really necessarily in their mind because there might be other motivations or just other ideas of what, you know, their dental archetype is. And I, I really commend you for, you know, being brave enough to, you know, state what you want to do and make it personal and make it unique. Um, I, I think what you're intending to do is, is fantastic. Um, though I would, I would challenge you in the belief that, you know, you have to be old and gray to get to that point. 
you know, that's, that's just sure. sort of that to me, that sounds more like, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's this big divide that you have to eventually cross and it's going to take some great amount of time. And eventually as you're old, you sort of get to this, you know, ultimate point. Um, but you know, I wouldn't be surprised the type of person you are is, 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 you know, ready as you are to implement things and make plans and, and take action steps. I wouldn't be surprised if you find yourself uh, long before you're, you're, you know, old and gray. I mean, that it can certainly be something you're doing for a long time, but you know, you might be driving that Chevelle in like seven years or, or less, you know, what if it's like within like two years out of school, one year out of school, really? you know, I mean, really the, you know, it, it's not, you know, time itself is not really a, an agent of change as far as your professional career is concerned. I mean, it's, it's really a, how many things are you willing to try and how many things are you willing to fail and how dedicated are you to this? Are you going to keep, you know, pushing yourself and staying uncomfortable and, and always getting into new things. And I think when you pursue a life like that, it, it doesn't take decades to get to that vision that you have. And I think you're going to get there a lot sooner than you think. Um, so I'm going to be following your story, Matt. I really want to see you get there. Soon. <laughs> I, I want to see you popping. I, I want to see you popping the wheelies with a Chevelle very soon, my friend. Yeah. Oh, very man, soon. Be, uh, a good sight. <laughs> you know what? You, you keep following up and everything. We'll meet up for, you know, doctor dinners and whatnot. I'll let you oh, for sure. Out. We'll yeah, drag, we'll drag race out of the out of the. Park. I, I want to ride in the Chevelle. I'll probably be still driving my Honda Accord. I think I'm gonna drive that till the wheels fall off. But, um, you know who knows, man. I mean, it's a V6. I might be able to take on that Chevelle. We'll see. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'll race you in reverse if you need. I mean. uh, yeah, I might. I might need some help, man. I might need a little bit of help. We'll see. There you go. Yeah. Depends on how much time you spend on two wheels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah All right, so tell, tell me, um, how how's school going, man? How's how's everything going? Oh gosh. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a very different answer than if you'd asked me, um, a few, uh, short months ago or perhaps long months, it feels like a lifetime. Um, I've been back in school for about two weeks now. Uh, we are, you know, I'm a D four and we're currently, you know, back to working on mannequins every single day. I mean, I go in like three hours a day, do some clinical exercises and then, uh, I take a hike and I go back to doing all the stuff I do out of dental school. Um, in some ways that's been a blessing in other ways, you know, I really miss, you know, I miss my patients. I miss taking care of people. Um, I miss getting into, you know, situations, you know, trying to do like some surgery or a crown or whatever, and not knowing what I'm doing and looking for help. And I, I, I miss all the stress that would come along with that. I honestly do. Um, sometimes it becomes difficult to kind of fill in the spaces in my day, but, um, you know, it's it, it's good to be back. I mean, it's good to be back holding hand piece and, and cutting teeth. I'm I'm feeling a lot more appreciative of that. Um, I think someone on Facebook said, uh, you know, I would give anything to do a number 15 DO right now. Right. Like, I think that was like the last thing I did before we got dismissed. And I was like, God, I don't know if I can do this for the rest of my life. And now like, I wish I could go in today and go do number 15 DO, you know? Right. Um, and, and in a way that's kind of encouraging because I remember that like I actually do really love doing what I'm doing. And it's, it's easy to kind of get caught up in the, in the minutia of dental school and, and kind of forget why you're there and that you actually do love it. Um, so I, I just, I keep calling my patients all the time and say, I'm like, Hey, I don't know when I'm going to see you next, but you know, I'm really excited. Just keep me in mind because you know, we got a lot of work to do and I, I miss you. You know, like I tell my patients, I miss right. you. Um, so in, in summary, dental school is, it's a slow start, but, we're getting there. It, it yeah. shouldn't be too long. So that's, that's pretty inspiring. Cause especially what you said, um, how, you know, when you, you really miss it. And I think, I you know, I don't know if we're going to get to that point cause hopefully everything will be, uh, rolling by the time we're really seeing a lot of patients, but yeah. you know, I'll probably remember what you just said. Like when I'm thinking, Oh, this is getting real tough. I don't know if I want to do this for, <laughs> for sure. the rest of my life, but like, I'll think about what you said. Yeah. That, that great attitude you have is contagious because it's getting frustrating right now with trying yeah. to see patients, you know, they're like, don't yeah. touch your hand pieces. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe if there's like a denture right. patient that walks by, because, <laughs> I'm like, it's tough. I mean, yeah. you know, all I want to do is drill. I want to, you know, communicate with the patients and stuff. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I think that frustration reminds you that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Definitely. it's what, it's what we're meant to do. And, um, there's just a certain amount of satisfaction that you, uh, maybe you take for granted when there's all these things to do that you just kind of forget that like, I actually do love this. I want to be doing this. And now that I can't right now, I just, I just can't wait to get back to it. So, um, I hope a lot of people out there and in your audience identify with that because I mean, if you don't have that, then like, what do you really have? Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Definitely. Um, now certainly, I mean, if you want to be successful in dentistry and, and not be 
so clinical and work with patients. Like there's obviously, you know, there's definitely uh, routes for that where you can, you know, make a great living for yourself and still afford that Chevelle, even if you're not, you know, spending a handpiece every day. Um, but I think there, there really is something to be said for, you know, when the things that you value are things that you're working on every day with your very own hands and, and you're helping make those changes for people. I mean, that's, you know, that's what we're here for. So. hundred percent. Sure. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I love it. We're, yeah. So we're, yeah, we're so like, this lights a fire. It does. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. So tell me a little bit more about, you know, where you guys are at. I mean, I, I know you're kind of transitioning more into patient care. Obviously COVID is, is being a bit of an obstacle towards that. Um, but like, how do you guys feel like kind of coming out of Simulab and, and getting into, you know, the real, you know, aspect of it? What, what's it like for you? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we're, so we're like, like Matt said, we're not really drilling. We're no yeah, Cavitron, no right, uh, right. So it's it's weird. Like like I I told you uh, a couple of days ago. Like everything's on Zoom, but then mm -hmm. we go in and we see patients for a couple hours, and it's reduced number of total clinical hours that we're gonna yeah. probably graduate with. So that kind of sucks. Like, are you yeah. having any problems with like licensing, or have you have you guys discussed anything about that? Yeah. So that's, I mean, anything that's not happening in the next three weeks is not really being discussed at large because it's so, you know, capricious, like it, it's always changing all the time. Um, so we really haven't gotten into what boards are going to look like, what licensing is going to be like, you know, thankfully I'm not quite at that stage yet. Um, I know that some of my people that were above me that were seniors before me, um, they've run into some issues, but for the most part, you know, they're going off to their residencies or they're, you know, doing whatever they're doing and they're not terribly impeded by it. So they've been pretty fortunate with that. We were lucky to kind of everyone had their boards done before COVID happened. So they're not actually having to try and schedule around all this stuff happening, um, which I'm, I'm sure they're very thankful for. Uh, you know, for me, it's really just a challenge of going in there and using that three hours out of my day to try and learn something. And, you know, a lot of the things I'm kind of going through are kind of basic, like I've already done them in clinic before. Um, but I'm trying to like challenge myself, make it a little bit harder on me, imagine myself in certain clinical situations. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like, you know, when I get back to patient care, I don't, I don't know, you know, how things are going to be accounted for in terms of my requirements. Fortunately, I was a good bit ahead when that, when all this went down. So I, right. I shouldn't be as far off, but there are other people that haven't been quite so fortunate and, you know, some of them are sweating, but I've got faith that everything's going to work out. I, I do. I, I think that accommodations will be made and, you know, ultimately we're going to get be back, be back to taking care of people for too long. So, um, you know, I think we're, we're kind of right now, we're just living a story. You know, it's something we're going to be telling people in the future about, you know, what was it like to be a dentist during COVID? And uh, we, I think we all have kind of a unique perspective on it because we're, you know, somewhat considered to be one of the most high at risk professions uh, amidst all this because of the aerosols we generate and everything. And it's, you know, it's been, uh, it's been devastating to a lot of private practice owners. It's been uh, certainly shifting for people in dental school. Um, and it, it's, I think it's a, you know, it's, it's a unique challenge for us, you know, being at this stage, trying to get those reps in and get that experience in and make the most of it um, while we're sort of dealing with the circumstances. But, you know, the same things always apply to people that are, you know, pushing themselves all the time and, and trying to grow the most they can. They're going to get the most out of it at, at any stage, no matter what happens. Right. For sure. And that's like, uh, I was listening to Brady Frank today and he was saying, mm -hmm. um, turn the liability. So right now a, a practice would kind of be a liability, you know, if you're not producing, Sure. You're always seeing like limited emergencies, not, not enough emergencies, turn that liability into an asset, uh, sell it, you know, just, yeah. it, you can just kind of change your frame of mind. He's so like positive and yeah. multiple times. And he always says how, um, he's been through like three recessions. Um, so he's like, he's, he's kind of figured it out, I guess. And he loves it. It was, um, Nathan Coverman sent this to me. It was him. And who's the, who's the real estate guy. He's like, he's a real estate dentist. Um, oh my, David uh, Phelps. That's oh, of course. Yeah. David Phelps. Yeah. Yep. And okay. it, they were on together. I think it was like a May 10th episode. Mm -hmm. And, um, he was saying that like, he's trying to put all of his stuff into real estate, all of his assets into real estate, because obviously it's going to be a little bit more safe and uh, practice during, uh, like a recession time. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's, that's, there's always going to be a pivot, right? Um, I mean, there's always a challenge to be adaptable. I think that, one thing that kind of draws people to dentistry in the first place is this idea that we're recession proof, that we're, you know, essential, which has kind of had, you know, some, some holes have been poked in that argument, I suppose. Um, but, you know, there's this kind of idea that you can kind of cruise, like you go through dental school, you get your degree, you go out and you just automatically make six figures and you, and you have the life you want just so long as you're able to accomplish the duties of that job. But 
um, you know, dentistry is not exempt from pandemics. It, it's not exempt from, you know, unforeseen circumstances. Ultimately, we have to be adaptable. We have to always be looking at how we're going to pivot, how we're going to be able to maximize our time. There's absolutely like, you know, COVID's not a death sentence. There's no reason that we have to just sit around and watch Netflix all day. There's no shame in it, not in myself. But, you know, if we sit there and like really critically assess how we spend our day and, and how we can, like you said, convert those liabilities to assets, like, you know, yeah, I don't have as much time in dental school now, but I do have a lot more time to record podcasts. Right. I have a lot more time to create content and, and create a coaching program, which I've been working on. So, you know, it's always the pivot and it, it's entirely up to you. It's not up to what's being said on the news. Right. All right. So you, you said the word, do we want to get to. into the super secret plan? I, I've been waiting on it. All right. Let's <laughs> do it. All right. It's about so time. I told you Tyler's, uh, he's got something up his sleeve. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So sure Tyler, un- unload what, what you got for us. Right. So, obviously we've already said that I've been associated with share practices for some time. And one of the core beliefs of share practices is that of all the things we offer, we offer podcasts, we have CE content, whatever. I mean, if you've been a consumer of share practices, you understand those sort of things um, that we have out there. Um, But during this time, I kind of critically assessed that, you know, the most effective thing we really offer is coaching. You know, it's, it's one-on-ones or group coaching with Matt or George. And those have, you know, been implemented with great success. It's been responsible for getting tons of clients into practice ownership. And I realized that, you know, another belief we have is that we are trying to get people to pursue ownership as soon as possible, regardless of what stage in the journey they're in. So um, I felt that it was incumbent upon me being the last, you know, non-dentist in the share practices network uh, to create a coaching program that was made uh, for dental students uh, by and for dental students uh, with regards to helping them form their vision, form their mindset, create goals, implement certain steps to, to reach that and maximize their time in dental school. So what I put together um, is a group coaching program that is specifically and only for dental students. And uh, we're going to be having a webinar on June 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to be talking all about everything that's going to be included. And uh, the program itself is actually going to be launching uh, July 1st, the very limited spaces. And wow. I'm, I'm going to be pretty much handpicking the people that get into it. Um, so I, I'm super, super excited about it. You know, this is sort of helping other people implement things that I've been doing for some time. Um, there's been a lot of trial and error and uh, a lot of it comes from secondhand advice, but there's also a lot of novel stuff that comes along in the journey. And so the whole purpose is to get some people together with, you know, a common, uh, these sort of common threads that we've been talking about throughout this episode and use their different skills to absolute maximum efficiency and, and force people to change that sort of intent to get into ownership into a goal and, and give them you know, the means and the accountability that's necessary to, you know, sort of force people into action and and make them take charge of the time that they have. Absolutely. I mean, it's huge. So Tyler, you like, how long ago did we talk about this? You put this thing into action, man. Like that's crazy. I I, I can't believe you got, so you're done with everything, huh? You're ready to launch. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's something that you always can tinker at and, and try to perfect to the best of your ability, but yeah, absolutely. The bulk of it was really put together in I'd say three or four weeks. Um, I mean, it's, it's building on principles that we've been creating for years. I mean, we, we created the ownership accelerator, which is actually going to be included in the group coaching program. I'm probably not at liberty to say that yet, but I did. Um, and you know, we vault off those principles. We vault off things that we learn in, in the podcast. We vault off our own personal experiences with coaching. And so it's, yeah, it did take me only, you know, a few weeks to throw it all together, but obviously like the hard work that actually gave me the potential to, to make that happen, um, you know, has been years in the making. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Like, uh, yeah, I, I know you've been trying to compile some stuff for a long time. You know, yeah. I've got my own little library, share that with you. Uh, <laughs> right. So, yeah. Like I'm, I'm real excited for this, man. I really am. Like I'm yeah. sure that this is going to be some high quality stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely just, I want to see a lot of people in the webinar, you know, we're, like I said, we're going to be talking about it and uh, you know, it's pitching the whole thing and everything it has to offer. I mean, you know, basically the mission of it is to take any sort of dental student, be the D ones through D fours and uh, absolutely get them on the path to practice ownership. And, you know, especially for some people that are a little bit later on the process, I highly anticipate uh, that those that are going to be sending out their mailers, which really I, I kind of like everyone to send them off. I don't think there's ever a terrible time to do it, but the ones that are going to be doing it, they're going to be getting some opportunities back and we're going to be looking at those opportunities, talking about whether or not they agree with their goals and actually getting them to actuate and get themselves in those situations to be positioned uh, to be owners upon graduation or very soon after. So I am super excited to see those success stories. I mean, personally, 
Uh, you know, I've been working with George and, and Matt and Richard a long time. And I, and I see when people ride into the show and they say, Hey, this show is responsible for me being the practice owner. It's changed my life. My income's quadrupled since I started listening to the show. And I am so excited to create those sorts of transformations for dental students. I mean, I, I'm super passionate about it. I think that's hopefully that's coming through the mic. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's something I worked really hard on and I'm just so excited to uh, see the transformations that come out of it for sure. 100%. What, um, what's the contact information and how can, how can uh, listeners? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So um, anyone can message me on Facebook, Tyler Tolbert. Um, you can also shoot me an email. That's Tyler at sharepractices.com. Um, I'll get you on our listserv. We have some updates that are being sent out about the webinar with a link as well. Um, I, I suppose we could also post the link to the webinar in the show notes if, if you guys do that. Um, so yeah, just reach out to me any way you can and, and I'll get you on the listserv and, and we'll get it linked up so that you know, everybody just come in the webinar and learn more. Right. And we'll, uh, we'll post, we'll do a whole thing. We'll post it in dental student vibes. You know, we'll do That's amazing. All, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get yeah. everyone we know so, to, you yeah. Know, to, yeah. Well, you guys have uh, quite a vibe tribe behind you. So I, yeah. I certainly hope some people will, uh, will want to attend that. I mean, I, I got to really commend you guys for what all you've been able to assemble. I mean, you guys bring so much to the table that, that I really envy. I mean, just the content you produce, um, you know, you're always pushing things out. They always have just beautiful quality and they just have, I mean, for lack of a better word, a vibe. <laughs> oh, it's all Matt. Okay. I've been, okay. Well, Matt, I'm sorry. I've been giving Seth way too much credit. Matt, you've been doing some really amazing stuff with your production here. On, I'm, the, I'm the guy uh, behind, the, uh, behind the screen, he's, behind he's the, the camera. He's the man in the chair. Okay. Oh, well man. then Matt, I admire you, Seth. I admire your Instagram. <laughs> So, I mean, it, it's cool because, um, like one of the things today, while well, one of our mentors, we, we did an interview with him, Dr. Nathan Copperman, um, mm -hmm. he reached out to me. He's like, Hey, I'm going to be in South Florida and, um, just, you know, maybe you can let people know and I'll, I'll just reach out to them and we'll go to cool. dinner, you know, do a little wine and dine, that That's sort great. of thing. And I was like, absolutely. Cause like that, that guy, I swear to you, he's taught me so much. And so I just mentioned it and we got a ton of great response from people like down there at Nova. So yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's awesome. what we're trying to do, you know, just connect, yeah, for sure. connect mentors, mm -hmm. mentees, students to, to doctors. Like that, that's the goal here, you know? Yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm a very strong believer that your success is directly proportional to the hands you shake or the people you have on the mic. I mean, it, it's exactly, you know, it's, it's why we're all doing this. I mean, I, I, I love dentistry per personally. I love the business of dentistry. Um, and I love podcasting, but like the power of it all is that networking, just being able to interface with so many like high performing professionals and, and learn from them. I mean, you know, when you think of all the things it takes to be this super dentist, like Matt wants to be, um, which I commend him on that goal. It's, it's, it's a long road, but it can be very rewarding or you want to be a business owner or, or you just want to wear so many different hats, right? Like you want to be a pillar in podcasting or you want to be a dentist or whatever. It, they're, they're, it's almost a bit overwhelming because it's like you get this feeling that you've got to figure all that out on your own, but it's not entirely true. Success leaves clues and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just learn from people. And if you're the type of person that can just meticulously learn and take those notes and implement them in your daily life. Like it's just absolutely amazing because you'll just look back at all the things you've done and you're just kind of stunned. Like you're almost in all of yourself and the things that you've done. And I'm sure you guys have already experienced that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the weird thing is like you accomplish stuff. Like, I mean, this happens for me, this might happen for you as well. You accomplish something, but you don't even like sit there and look at it. You're just like, all right, what's next? Like, let's keep going. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. It's, it's a kind of a problem. No, like, it, I got, I got to be that guy on his shoulder. And I just sit there and I'm like, Hey, you, you need to take a step back and enjoy what we just did. You're the man. Minute. Yeah. Can we sit down and like, you know, actually, you know, soak it up and then take a step forward and move on to the next thing because mm -hmm. he doesn't have an off switch. Yeah. He's yeah. Like constant. So I, I mean, I, I do think like, I, I love, you know, accomplishing as much as we can, but you got to enjoy, you know, with what Dude. you've done, you know, you got to look behind you and say, okay, I've done this much and let that be motivation to fuel you to do even more. Yeah. Well, that that's very impressive, Matt. And I got to tell you, not only are you very talented in the in the area of producing all these things for still student vibes, but you're saying something that my coach had to teach me. Mm -hmm. And it was an extremely humbling lesson because like I've always been so committed to my process of growth. And for a long time, there's just been this sort of inherent idea that, you know, if I'm growing, there's something wrong with me or I haven't done enough or, you know, I'm just not, I'm not what I want to be. And it's very like, it's almost self-flagellating because you're not willing to give yourself credit for the things that you've done and how you've grown and the things that you've accomplished because you're always what's in your mind 
is this thing that you can never actually attain because you're just going to keep getting better and better and do all these things. And, you, and it's, it, it really takes someone sometimes to just put their hand on your shoulder and say, Hey, like you're doing amazing things. Like you're doing great. Like keep pushing, keep doing what you're doing, but you absolutely have to step back, take a breath and like congratulate yourself. And that's been a huge milestone for me that I've had to kind of like just let myself have some credit. Um, and, and that's absolutely essential. It's, it's a more positive relationship with growth that I think is mm -hmm. super important, especially for just us, you know, our type of people. Like we're, I think we're all cut from the same cloth here. Like we're, you know, we're always implementing, we're always growing, we're always trying to, to be better. Um, and, and you have to give yourself some credit for, you know, where you are compared to where you were, not just where you are compared to where you want to be. Right. Definitely. I mean, I, I look at it like I, I try to pick good things out of, you know, you know, situations where you normally wouldn't like we record an episode, we record episodes all the time, you know, a couple yeah. times a week, once a week, whatever it is. And if we do a good episode and it's like, you, there's good information, <clears throat> I try to get fulfillment out of that saying like, okay, well, you know, I have, you, you know, I did all this stuff this week, but I recorded an episode and this is going to reach somebody that's going to learn yeah. something from it. And I get fulfillment yeah. out of that saying that like, okay, I learned something, but I'm also putting this out free for everyone else to you know, yeah. learn as well. And you know, whether it's like we get, a topic from a student or whatever that uh, that message is in it's like oh maybe sure. you know try something like that and then we'll find that you know that student is going to you know have the knowledge for that 30 minutes that we recorded with somebody that knows that you know yeah. and i try to look at that too rather than just saying okay the podcast is a way of life for us but we still you know you, you got to enjoy what you're doing you know yeah. because like yeah. if you if your job becomes work you got to find a new job and i don't want that to happen oh, whether that's good if, dude. <laughs> yeah like whether it's dentistry or podcasting or whatever you got to enjoy yeah. it you know yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, whenever I hear back from people that have been listening to the show and they tell me that, you know, they love the episode or they learn something from it, like that is just so much that, that's rocket fuel for me. Like mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, you know, I, I'm not an altruist. Like I, obviously like I get a lot out of being a podcast host. I get a lot out of trying to coach people um, just in my personal life, but you know, doing things for other people is basal to what we do as dentists. Like you can't, like, you're not going to love being a dentist if you don't care about benefiting other people. And so I think, you know, just us as people, we're already primed to do that. And so, you know, being able to realize that through a podcast or coaching or CE or some of the consulting you guys, I know, I know you guys have been doing with uh, pre-dental people. Like that's, I mean, that's just what it's all about. That's true life satisfaction. It's something that you know, the value of it never actually diminishes over time. It, it really only grows because you see that sort of body of work and all the changes that you've made in other people. And it's just, it's immense. That's it's well put. You ever, now, you, you know what I remember, like thinking back on that, you remember your first denture patient where mm -hmm. they come in, you know, walking around, like, you know, talking <laughs> in your mouth, like, you yeah, know, of course. Everything. and then you, you finally put the final dentures in and, you know, you see the smile and you see the look yeah. on your face or whatever, you just change somebody's, you know, whole persona. That's it. I know. I know. I, I think, I think one of the, one of the moments, like one of the visions that like hits me the most when I, when I picture the things I want to do at dentistry is that is the mirror moment, you know, when mm -hmm. they see it and they cry or they just like, just have a, a very obvious, you know, external reaction to it. Like, I mean, that's just, that's just the meaning of what we do. I mean, that's what it all really distills down to. I mean, there's a lot that we do um, that leads up to that one moment, but it's, it's just all worth it when that kind of thing happens. And, you know, Truth be told, for every time that happens, there's probably a million other times where someone's pissed off at you. But, but man, hundred <laughs> percent, like, yeah. But you know, you learn you learn to kind of let all that sort of uh -huh. get lumped into something you're not really obsessed with. And in those moments, they just they keep pushing you. And uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I see you having a lot of those moments in the future with you know mm -hmm. your your idea of doing comprehensive dentistry and you know no no ortho though. Um, <laughs> it's just and, uh, wire bending and stuff is not my forte. Uh, well, hey. I'll tell you what it was. So we have this one mentor. Um, we went in. He he's he's kind of phasing out. He said he wants bit, to yeah. phase out. He he he. Go, so he works. We won't like, say who it is. No, so, no, no, yeah. no, he works three days a week. And he's on the beach yeah, like the other four days. He lives a good life. Yeah, yeah. Know, yeah. And and so we went in there to shadow him this one day. He's like, hey, you guys want to assist me? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Go in there. Uh, what like eight a.m. Yeah. One patient like five or six procedures walk out at 6 p.m. Just what I, I don't know. And it was all free. He did it all for free. Wow. Uh, it was like, was there endo, oh, crown he, lengthening, he extraction, like literally everything. Yeah, he did. Wow. He, he went through the ringer, perio surgery, you name yeah. it. He did it. Like yeah. he got a full scope of, of all that stuff. I don't, 
And I'm just like, okay, is it time for lunch? Like, can work? He was yeah, like, yeah, what it's it like a break. I need to explain what I did just now. So it's not even like a break. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, he's literally like let's yeah. go to my office so I can tell you guys what I just I don't, I don't, like I don't need to eat her. Alone. He's like, you know what yeah. kind of suturing I just did? I was like, no. He sutured at some point. Like, <laughs> he's always throwing stuff together. It looked like he was cooking over here. He's like, yeah. like whipping yeah. up and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, that's amazing. He's going nuts. And it's like, I mean, he, he's intense with how he does it. He's been practicing for a long time, but, you know, so he's at that point. And I see, like, I saw him and I was like, the care he provides or whatever. He, and he had a lot of good points too about where you provide comprehensive care to somebody. And it's it's so much more meaningful to the patient because the patient the patient trusts you. You know, oh, yeah. you built that rapport already. So, you know, let's say Seth is the, you know, the oral surgeon. And I, I send the, pa- the patient's been seeing me for 10, 15 years. They need something or whatever. Like I've been seeing this kid goes to get like third molars out. Send him to Seth, you know. Don't he, send it to me. Well, yeah, I'm saying uh, hypothetically, you're the old surgeon. Like, <laughs> to say, okay, well, he seems cool. My dentist trusts him, but he's not my yeah. dentist, you know. Right. And there's a, right. there's a little something about it. So, uh, I, I mean, I could speak on that myself, you know, where you have my dentist, Definitely. and I had to go to an oral surgeon one time, and I had to build that rapport again. I saw that. Yeah. Sure have to see it. So, if I could do that myself, you, you know, I mean, yes. Yeah. All right, I, I got the perfect so, analogy for go this. Go for it. Here we go. You know when you've been seeing the same barber cutting your hair for years uh-huh. and then they're booked Dude. and you're like, dang it, I got to go somewhere else. And they just, oh my God, I can't tell you how many yeah. times you No, it's the worst. No, it, yeah, you, get, you get burned every time too. You get burned. Yeah, if, that, if it's the barber's <laughs> case, you just wait till the next day. Yeah, you no. Know, you, unless you're out. like, you got to be another day. <laughs> no that's that's yeah, a good analogy that, that comprehensive care thing i saw how yeah yeah no absolutely i mean and that's a great point the trust that they build like, okay well yeah. is this and everything and it's word of mouth too like your patient's like oh you went somewhere for that root canal like my dentist did the same thing to me right like, really your right does that too like as well so you know kind of it could be a practice builder as well throwing in yeah. things that, you know not everyone else is doing so yeah and and you know dental fear and anxiety is very common and you know, it's a lot easier when you know the when you know the person that's that's administering that care, and a lot of times when people get referred out, it's for the stuff that is probably the scariest. You know, it's 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 like something that an oral surgeon has to do, or an endo has to do, or a periodontist will have to do, um, and they're going into that kind of cold, and you know that's tough. I mean, I you know I, I'm not saying anything about specialty. I think it's wonderful. Um, you got to have people that are there to bail you out or or do something that's just way out of your wheelhouse. I mean, obviously you got to have that in your community, but the more that you can keep in house, the more uh, comfort and, and, and faith that you can give your patients that you can take care of them, whatever their issue is, like, it's amazing. And, and so I, yeah, I absolutely commend you for, you know, identifying that that's what you want out of your own career and, and, um, taking action steps to, uh, to see that through for sure. Definitely. I mean, yeah. like, do you have any clinical, you know, goals of like where you want to be, but like by the end of your career, by like a certain point? Yeah. I mean, it, it that's a good question. So, my difficulty with it is figuring out exactly, you know, how long do I want to be clinical? Do I want to be clinical my whole life? I think that's a question that, you know, we should always attempt to answer to the best of our ability, but life changes. Like it's fluid, you know, your priorities change, you know, what you feel your purpose here is changes. And, you know, for the time being, I am more or less just looking in the next about 10 to 15 years, because I'm pretty confident I'll be clinical for that long. I do feel that despite being someone that's very business oriented, you know, I do want to be getting my hands dirty. Um, and, and I want to be helping out patients. And, and that's what I see myself doing and provided my body puts up with it, you know, I'll, I'll keep doing it. So uh, some of the things that really interest me the most are you know, implants, certainly I've taken probably uh, somewhere upwards of about 100 credit hours of implant CE, you know, in the time that I've been in dental school. Um, and I've been just like very singularly focused on that for a long time. Um, but I've also done some shadowing. I went down to, uh, uh, Dr. Bill Strupp at Michael Brom's office. You've probably seen uh, their page and some of the posts that they have. And, um, I I went to their course and, and shadowed them and saw a lot of the uh, FMR type stuff that they do, which is of course, I mean, that falls into the uh, category of, you know, comprehensive dentistry. I mean, they've always comp, they, treat the entire patient right um and and get them from a to b in really amazing ways so you know i definitely want to be able to take on some of those bigger cases i, I want to be implant competent i think implants are responsible for some of the most transformative things that you can do in dentistry um and it, it makes possibilities where there used to not be any um but also i mean a lot of things that you've already mentioned can be just as life-changing as well um and you know while most of the time i'm spending time thinking about how i can build a stable bread and butter business that has like strong hygiene and all that stuff you know, absolutely. I mean, if I can personally 
uh, see to it that I change people that, you know, are in that sort of situation and maybe don't have the financial means to do it. You know, absolutely. I, I could see that being a very fulfilling thing for me. Um, so, you know, those things are always in mind and, you know, I, I am clinically passionate. I read clinical textbooks and stuff and it's super weird and pedantic, but, um, I'm just going to kind of, you know, when you have a passion, you got to follow it. Right. So, um, for me right now, I'm, I'm very singularly, in, uh, focused on implants and just kind of getting my bread and butter up to snuff. Um, cause you know, courses like Shrub and Brum's, uh, uh, simplifying complex course, like really raised that bar for me and made me realize that bread and butter is far from just, you know, simple. Um, and, and so, you know, I'm always trying to raise that bar and make sure I have a lot in my clinical offering. Cause I mean, it's, I mean, I, I've had the fortune of experiencing it a few times just in my short time of treating patients. It's been a little over a year now, I suppose. And, you know, when someone comes to you with the problem, especially when it's been around for a long time and they've just kind of accepted it or put up with it and you offer a solution. And especially when you're actually able to see that through yourself, even as a student, like it's, it's pretty incredible. I mean, I mean, that's, that's, that's what we do it for. And that's even with not so complex dentistry. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I am clinically focused and I don't think I quite have quite the clarity of vision that you do. So I admire that. Um, and you know, you got to keep working at it for sure. So what do you, would you say that the Strupp and Brum is the best clinical CE that you've taken so far? Um, so that, I mean, that's a loaded question. It, it totally depends on what you're trying to learn. I mean, you know, uh, it depends on, you know, if you want to simpl simplify full mouth rehabilitation and understand how to approach a, a case of that degree of complexity, um, you know, I haven't done a whole lot of looking into full mouth rehabilitation courses. That's just the one I happen to go to. Um, it was incredible. I, I do highly, highly recommend it. Um, they send you home with, you know, all the materials and slides and stuff, and they're both right. really fantastic lecturers. Um, and they really care about sort of paying it forward and, and, and giving to the world, the dental world, um, some gems that you really won't find elsewhere. They've got some, um, not pro necessarily proprietary, but some really, you know, game changing ideas about, um, the restorative aspects of dentistry, the perio aspects, what is cleansability, what is hygiene, you know, does this need a crown here? Does this not? Uh, what is a cosmetic versus aesthetic smile, understanding the difference there and just sort of, you know, how to approach a potentially very complex case and make it, you know, simple and predictable and, um, you know, different ways of attaining just really nice, predictable perfection is what I say it, it really offers. And um, it's, you know, you'll go to that course, especially as a student and you'll come back and you'll be like, I don't know how I could possibly implement any of this stuff, you know, with, mm -hmm. with the sort of situation I have, but it puts inklings in your mind, like things that you have to think about, like, how do I get a perfect impression, right? How do I get a perfect full mouth impression? Like, you know, you guys are going to experience in clinic, like when you're just trying to do like, just get one good impression of a single crown, like you're probably gonna get frustrated. Like for me, I got a few lucky first ones and then I eventually found out how difficult it can be. Um, and they're doing it with, you know, like 10 preps at a time or, or more. Um, so, I mean, that, that is definitely a very valuable course, uh, but you know, the question of, you know, what's the best one to go to just entirely depends on who you're trying to be and what's going to get you there efficiently. I mean, I can, there's so much CE out there that will treat you, teach you how to be any kind of dentist you want to be, but you can't really be all of it at the same time. You know, I mean, it, it depends on what you're really trying to be great at. And I think it's important that you kind of focus in on, on what those things are and then find from that, what will be the best CE for you? Because objectively saying this is better than that is it's, it's a very difficult thing to do, you know, personally, and I know I'm talking a lot, but personally, you know, I'm very interested in implants. So for me, I wanted to pursue implant dentistry. Um, so I, I, I went and took sort of a starter course, um, out in Philly and, um, it was like sort of a two day, you know, weekend type course. It was just a good, you know, introduction to everything. And then I went all the way through, uh, implant pathway. It was, a, you know, four sessions, one of them's online, two are hands-on. Uh, and then one of them is the live surgical course out in uh, uh, Tempe, Arizona. And so that was like, that's Dr. Moody. That, correct. Absolutely. So, I mean, it, you know, I, I say this all the time on the show, like if you're, if you're looking to get an implant dentistry, you know, absolutely go to implant pathway. I mean, it, it's simple. Those, those guys are just absolutely amazing what they do. Um, they take you from zero to one so quickly and they, they help you appreciate all the other complexities and nuances of implant dentistry, but they do it in such a way that, you know, they sort of pave this path for you to get up to simple, predictable implants and give you sort of, you know, a preview of what else can be done. And then they have sort of advanced curriculum as well for, you know, grafting sinus lifts, um, you know, full fixed restorations and stuff like that. So, um, highly, highly recommend implant pathway for that. Right. Book your uh, flight. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now's an interesting time to be yeah. booking flights for sure. <laughs> oh, I forgot about Jesus. Cast up a car. <laughs> car Florida, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got another loaded question for you then. Please. Um, 
So that was clinical. Okay. Yeah. How about business? And don't say ownership accelerator because I already bought it. Okay. And that's a plug for uh, share practices. <laughs> and uh, Tyler Dolbear that gets the referral fee. Okay, great. So okay. go ahead. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so the best clinical C, I mean, obviously I, I can't not be, you know, biased towards share practices, towards coaching programs and stuff like that. Um, other than that, breakaway is a big one. Um, you know, uh, I think I, I don't think I mentioned it on this episode, but, um, I, before I got into dental school, I went to, um, a breakaway seminar. Those are out in uh, San Antonio, Texas. They're, they're taught by, uh, Dr. Scott Luna. Does he and still his- do it? Cause I heard that he's like, uh letting somebody else do it now or something. I don't know. Uh, that may be the case. I'm not sure. I mean, this was like five years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, it, he definitely has a lot on his plate and is likely to delegate things. And mm-hmm. I'm sure it's still to the same effect. I mean, um, the seminars really are incredible. I, I went to one that was specifically designed for startups. Um, you know, why the hell I was there for a startup seminar before I was even in dental school is anyone's guess. Um, but I did actually learn a lot of things and it did kind of help shape how I was learning things in school and some perspectives that I had. Um, so I'm, I'm actually planning on going to the, uh, business masters, uh, seminar, um, probably a little bit later, kind of closer to graduation, just so things are kind of still fresh. Um, but it's an excellent, excellent course. They go through, you know, systems, they really get down to brass tacks of how to run an efficient office and, right. um, you know, manage your overhead and, you know, uh, you maximize the phones, maximize your new patient flow. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're listening to a podcast or something, you, you can appreciate the importance of some of these things, but you know, podcasters will only really go so deep into it because like, you know, just the sort of format of all this makes it very difficult to actually communicate some of these things. And, you know, you get a book, there's a, there's a presentation, you can ask them, you know, questions actively saying, Oh, I don't get this. Can you explain it a little bit better? Um, so, you know, breakaway is definitely a really big one. I think that's just sort of a standard for anyone looking to get an ownership for sure. So the business masters, yeah. So you think it would be a bad idea if I bought that for my girlfriend for her birthday? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know your girlfriend all too well. Um, but <laughs> but he only you know, this is good advice. He's he, he's got a fiance. Yeah, so he's, he's that's true. Of- I, I did make it that far. Um, yeah. yeah. He's uh, not interested in, in any of that at all. That was a joke. So. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. You know, I don't, I just don't want to be responsible if, if you go in and, and get that for her and she hates it and you know, she so just, we're on record right now too. So exactly. So, you know, there's a liability in that. I only want to help you so much Seth. <laughs> you. You you, Tyler. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man. All right. Well, I think we're, we just hit like an hour here. Yeah, so we and it, Jesus. Flew by. Yeah, it really did. So, yeah. um, can you can you tell us uh so when we post this um can you tell everybody once again um about your new program of course yeah so uh, the name of the program is the pursuit of ownership uh task force and we're going to be talking about it uh it's okay if that made you laugh it was supposed to um and we're going to be having a webinar uh june 17th that's next wednesday at 7 p.m eastern um just hit me up on facebook uh if you're not already subscribed to uh share practices uh, our listserv Hit me up on Facebook. I'll get you connected with it. I'll get you a link. I might even be able to send you guys a link for the webinar as well to put in the show notes if you want to. Um, so just please come to the webinar, hear what we got to say. Um, it, it's, it's really a whole lot of fun. I've been in on these webinars before that George and, and Matt have hosted. And it really is a good time and a good opportunity to kind of, you know, interface with us guys and, uh, and just, you know, have a great conversation. And, you know, if you end up being interested in coaching, that's fantastic. So, um, yeah, that's what's going down. Awesome. Love it. Tyler, you're yeah. the man. Hey. Honor and a privilege. This yeah. has been been super helpful absolutely it's been a lot of fun i love what you guys do um i've definitely been taking notes and uh you know looking to uh you know improve uh what we're doing over at share practices just by kind of taking notes from you guys i mean that's what all this is about is taking notes from other people right so uh just thank you so much for having me on being very transparent about what you're looking to do in dentistry i think you guys are going to go really really far and you're going to help a lot of people do it too so i appreciate you thanks tyler thank you thank you All right, Vibe Tribe, that'll do it for this episode featuring Tyler Tobert of the Shared Practices Podcast. And we hope you guys learned everything you could have learned about how to buy a practice straight out of dental school and how to do it successfully and make it the practice of your dreams. So as always, follow us on Instagram at dental.student.vibes and give us a like, comment, follow, everything. Just make sure that you guys give us the feedback that you want to give us. That way we can make this the best podcast that we can make it. And remember, as always, vibe on. Attention pre-dental students. Over 12,000 applicants each year apply to dental school. Out of 67 accredited schools in the United States, an average of only 90 students per class earn the privilege of acceptance. 
As former applicants who struggle through the rigorous ad SaaS process ourselves, we understand the hard work it takes to be one of the lucky few to get accepted. That being said, we are happy to announce that we are now offering Pre-Dental Mentor, a program designed to give back to the dental community and give you the best chance in getting accepted to the dental school of your dreams. Our brand new Pre-Dental Mentor program includes a team of five coaches who have all been a part of the AdSAS application within the past three years. Pre-Dental Mentor offers essay reviews, mock interviews, resume editing, secondary application editing, DAT prep, a personalized schools list, and an application checklist. To pre-order, slide into our DMs and get 30% off before June 1st. Contact us at dental.student.vibes on Instagram or email us at dentalstudentvibes at gmail.com. We only have 25 spots, so sign up before it's too late. We sincerely thank you for your support over the past year and are extremely happy to have the opportunity to give back. We were just in your shoes not too long ago.